This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Recently, I flipped through every story I've ever written. I do this every now and then, out of fear that I might accidentally write the same story twice. We can't have that. This time, my aim was to take stock of my past Valentine's Day-themed stories. What I found shocked me. Not one of them starred our dear Lambden, which is obviously unacceptable. Let's make it happen, shall we? It's called A Sleep Railroad Valentine. Take it away, Oliver and Sylvia. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, let's go. Unfortunately, Ms. Woolsmith has come down with a case of the itches. It was the middle of a school day, and Lambden had his head propped up on his hoof in order to stay awake. At the mention of the itches, something every lamb had heard of but few had yet experienced, Lambden scratched absently at his wool. I've had the itches twice myself, Mr. Yarnington went on. He was their substitute teacher. Once I had to be completely sheared in the dead of winter. (gasps) No! I was mistaken for a goat by my own mother. (laughs) Giggles erupted around the classroom. Mr. Yarnington's eyes went gray. He shuddered at the memory. Now then, students, it's time to begin our lesson on knots. But Mr. Yarnington, it's Valentine's Day. Ms. Woolsmith usually has us make a heart-shaped craft like a coaster you can put under your mug of steaming celery mint cocoa. Mr. Yarnington frowned. Yeah. Yep. A well-tied knot provides a measure of order in a world filled with dangling threads. A well-tied knot keeps one's sweater, at times one's very life, from coming apart at the seams. A well-tied knot is the perfect Valentine's Day craft. Lambden had been daydreaming, staring out the window at a duck cleaning itself in a small puddle in the grass. Now he glanced up at his substitute teacher along with everyone else. Knots? Seriously? Knots? Everyone get out your yarn and we shall begin. Soon, The students were busily tying knots. I think my dad's going to love this one. It'll remind him of his sailing days. Hey, psst. Huh? Hey, psst. Lambden did a double take. There was an enormous teddy bear in the doorway of his classroom. It had a big red heart on its tummy, and it held up a slingshot that it was aiming directly at Lambden. Whoa, what? Lambden glanced around at his classmates, but they were absorbed in knot-making. None of them noticed the mildly terrifying teddy bear. Something bright red went flying through the air, right into Lambden's forehead. Ow! Lambden saw stars for a moment and cradled his head. He glanced at the doorway, but the teddy bear was gone. Lambden, I think you dropped this. Wilsilla, Lambden's seatmate, held out a bright, red, wooden heart in her hoof. Ah, thanks. At the head of the class, Mr. Yarnington was droning on about knots. A finished woolen craft is only as good as the knot holding it together. A lazily tied knot will come apart with one strong pull. Now that reminds me of a sheep, Lintingly McWoolyton. 
He made beautiful woolen crafts, but then he'd tie them off with what I cheekily like to call the stumbler's knot. And would you Lambdin believe Lambdin couldn't Every focus time. on knots. He gazed down at the wooden heart on his desk and realized it was a box. A heart-shaped box with hinges on one side. He eased it open, wondering whether something might leap out at him. Inside were two objects, a tiny scroll of paper and a magnifying glass. He unfurled the one and held up the other. Even with the magnifying glass, Lambden had to squint at the subtle lettering on the scroll. Dear Lambden, tonight for a very, for a very special, special Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day ride, ride, the sleep, sleep train, train will set your heart ablaze with love for that most important of things in life, sleep. Now hurry home, fluff that wool, and press your button. Your journey awaits, but not but too not long, too long because, we because we do need, need to, to stick to a schedule. To a schedule. Lambden chuckled to himself, rolled up the scroll, and tucked it inside the box. Ding! Farewell, students. Remember, in a world filled with loose ends, be the knot. It was a gray February day, and the grass was damp from a recent rain. But Lambden hardly noticed the trip home. He daydreamed the whole way, looking forward to a nighttime adventure on the sleep train. And this time it would be simple, straightforward. A train ride celebrating love for sleep. Lambden's favorite thing in the world. And before he knew it, Lambden was skipping up the stairs to his home. He spent the afternoon reading beside the fireplace. Dinner was one of his favorites, stewed turnips with a side of tossed alfalfa. Finally, finally, it was time for bed. Lambden clomped up the stairs. He fluffed his wool and brushed his teeth. He slipped on a pair of red pajamas. Why not? It was Valentine's Day after all. And what a lovely, inevitable evening it was. Everything led into the next. It felt as though Lambden were on a conveyor belt, taking him straight to the sleep train. He glided to his bed, peeled back his pillow, and pressed his button. A great nothingness filled the room. Literally, nothing happened. Lambden peered at the button. He pressed it again. Lambden looked to his closed window. There was no one tapping against it or wrenching it open. He felt a pang, wishing for the first time in his life, that a sleep crew member would crash through the glass. But Lambden was alone. He turned back to his pillow. He stretched out his hoof and pressed his button a third time. There was still no great swirling cloud, but in the center of the button, a line of text appeared, as if lit from within. It read, Double tap for help. Lambden did as he was told. This time he heard, Well, hello. Hi. Uh, my button isn't. Whoopsie. It seems you've run into a technical snafu with your button. Very rare, of course. You've reached the Sleep Cruise Customer Service Helpline. Please hold while your call is connected to the next available associate. What? The estimated wait time is... Three hours. There are... Fifty-nine callers. Ahead of you. Three hours? Lambden put his head in his hoof. I don't have three hours. Outside, the sky was dark. 
Lambda knew the sleep train would be boarding in about three minutes. It occurred to Lambden that his broken button could doom his entire night. He might have to actually go to sleep in his own bed. This could not be happening. The estimated wait time is three hours and ten minutes. There are sixty-one callers ahead of you. How did that go up? Lambden glanced at the clock on his bedroom wall. It seemed to tick louder with each passing second. I can't believe I'm going to be stuck here. If only there was another... Wait a second. Lambden looked down at his pillow. There, not far from his broken sleep train button, was another button. One that he rarely even remembered was there. The sleep railroad button. It seemed to gleam under his newly focused attention. The estimated wait time is three hours and thirteen minutes. There are sixty-seven callers ahead of you. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Lambden stretched out his hoof and pressed the sleep railroad button. A puff of sparkling powder burst upwards from Lambden's pillow. He went tumbling downward. Lambden braced himself, expecting to fall onto a water slide. Instead, he landed with a thud on a pile of something dry and papery. Oof! Ah! Lambden looked around. In the dim light of the train tunnel, he could see he'd fallen on a pile of paper hearts. There must have been thousands of them. Yep. Huh? Who's there? Lambden looked down to see a chipmunk sitting in a tiny chair with a stack of pink paper on her lap. She was busily snipping the paper with a pair of scissors. Did you? You you cut out all these paper hearts? I did, yes. (laughs) Trust me, it's way better than the four-leaf clovers they want for St. Patrick's Day. My paw is sore for days after. Lambden stared at the chipmunk, puzzled. That's the bell. You better run. What? Go. Now. You don't want to miss the railroad. Lambden rolled down from the pile and stood up shakily. He tore off down the tunnel, leaving a trail of paper hearts beneath his hoofs. Good luck. Happy Valentine's Day. I don't think he's going to make it. Hello. Good evening. Happy Valentine's Day. Climb aboard, please. Hello. Good evening. Happy Valentine's Day. Climb aboard, please. Lambden rounded the bend and ran towards a red carpet dotted with golden hearts. Lava lamps with pink swirling liquid lined the carpet. At the end of it, nodding hello to the sleepy passengers, was the towering moose's identical twin sister. Hello, good evening. Happy Valentine's Day. Climb aboard, please. Still fifty yards away, Lambden watched as the last animal boarded the stairs. He watched as the moose pulled the stairs up behind her. He watched as she tied them with a rope that dangled from one end. No, wait! The moose looked up without urgency and squinted in the dim pink light of the tunnel. It's me, Lambden! But the moose disappeared into the train car. Lights flashed to indicate the train would move. Lambden ran as fast as his legs could carry him, his hoofs pounding into the platform. That broken button cost him precious minutes, but it wouldn't cost him an entire night. I am getting on this train. A bell sounded, and Lambden knew he had mere moments. He looked at the stairs the moose had tied into place, and Mr. Yarnington's words came back to him. A lazily tied knot will come apart with one strong pull. 
Lambden had seen the moose make that knot, and she didn't exactly spend much time on it. He reached for the end of the rope, just as the train lurched forward. No, 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 no. Trotting alongside the accelerating train, Lambden gave the rope one strong pull. He squeezed his eyes shut. Unwisely, given he was running alongside a locomotive, but he couldn't help it. What if the knot held? What if he had to find his way back to bed? What if Lambden felt the rope give way? He opened his eyes to see the knot undone, the rope dangling. The stairs fell downward with a plunk, and just before the train picked up too much speed, Lambden climbed aboard. The first thing he noticed was how packed it was inside the sleep railroad. Every single seat seemed to be filled, and he wondered if he could get kicked off if there was nowhere to sit. The second thing he noticed were the rows and rows of animals staring at him with enormous heart-shaped eyes. Startled, he nearly tripped in the aisle. The eyes stared, not at him, but through him. I mask. Lambden turned in the aisle to see a smiling skunk holding a stack of pink eye masks with heart-shaped eyes. Ah, uh, n- no thanks, he said, smiling to himself. Why was he so jumpy? The eyes were not real. They were printed on sleep masks. Lambden continued on, past rows and rows of animals many of whom were already snoring. Towards the back, he found a single open seat between a bobcat and a bearded dragon. He preferred to sit next to docile creatures, rabbits, squirrels, the occasional fish, but the railroad was full. Lambden settled into his seat. The bobcat barely looked up from his game of Sudoku, The bearded dragon glanced up from his crossword and, without salutation, said, Do you know a three-letter word for fury? Ire, came a voice from across the aisle. It was a newt, looking up from a book about window installation. And Lambden remembered then that it was possible for him to be selected as a speaker. Socks, neck pillows. It was the giraffe, milling down the aisle carrying a basket filled with plentiful socks, numerous neck pillows, and zero blankets. Lambden declined with a shake of his head as his seatmates happily slipped on their accessories, all of which were festooned with hearts. Hello, passengers. The towering moose's twin sister's voice came filtering down from the speakers, placed throughout the train's cabin. Our first speaker will be selected momentarily. In a festive twist for Valentine's Day, we ask that all speakers focus their talks on something they love, and to, of course, follow the rules posted by the lectern. We'll also be employing a new way to select our presenters tonight. The passengers in the sleep railroad shifted in their seats, and pushed up their eye masks to get a look at the first lucky presenter. That's when Lambden saw Cupid. It was a sly-looking fox with white feathered wings on his back and a gleeful look in his eye. He was looming over a row of seats at the head of the train, aiming a bow and arrow. Is that a real arrow? My mom said no emergency room visits tonight. The arrow sprang from Cupid's bow in a blur and hit a mongoose in the third row. The suction cup on the arrow stuck to the mongoose's head. Hey, Muncie Mongoose, please make your way to the lectern. The mongoose pulled the arrow from his forehead and ambled up to the microphone. Tonight I'm going to tell you why I dislike mowing my uncle's lawn. Ahem. 
the moose murmured from her seat. Something you love, Muncie. The mongoose blinked a few times, then began again. Tonight I'm gonna tell you why I love mowing my uncle's lawn. That's better. The moose smiled. My uncle has this big lawn outside his treehouse. Everyone advised against cultivating the lawn. We all told him it wasn't practical, that it would require lots of upkeep and manicuring, if you will. Yawns went up throughout the train cabin. Sleepy passengers pulled their masks over their eyes. Everyone told him it would make more sense to have a natural meadow, but my Uncle Sylvester is his own mongoose, so he went with the lawn. The animals in the sleep railroad were torn between confusion and boredom. Two years after he puts in this lawn, he breaks his foot while dancing at a polka competition. Well, guess who had to take over mowing Uncle Sylvester's lawn? Uh-oh, the moose tisked, pointing a hoof to the sign, bearing a list of rules for presenters to follow. Towards the bottom, it read, No requests for audience participation, even in the form of rhetorical questions. Sorry, uh, never mind that. Uh, it was me. I had to take over mowing the lawn, and I really love doing it. It fills me with dread. I mean, joy. Ah, uh, thank you, Muncie. Please return to your seat. The mongoose slunk down from the lectern. Lambden watched as Cupid appeared once more, emerging from a row in the middle of the train. Some passengers ducked to avoid getting picked. Others stood up in their seats and flung out their paws, hoping to be selected. Trust me, I'll put everyone to sleep. I got this. In the end, the arrow hit a pig who was out cold a few rows up from Lambden. Huh? What? You were picked. Me? Filbert Pigson. You've been hit with Cupid's arrow. Please make your way to the lectern and begin your speech. Lambden watched as Filbert plucked the suction cup of the arrow off his ear, slapped himself awake a few times, and made his way to the microphone. Uh, this evening, I will talk about mud puddles and why I love them. Immediately, half the train closed their eyes. The moose nodded approvingly. Mud puddles often form in depressions in the earth after an extended period of rain. Lambden felt heavy in his seat. Beside him, the bobcat's Sudoku book lay open, forgotten in his lap. The bearded dragon attempted to fill in some remaining boxes of his crossword puzzle, but his claw slipped, and he managed to scrawl a squiggle before his head lolled to one side. Some animals wade into mud puddles by accident. They might be reading a magazine or looking through binoculars when they take a wrong step and end up swimming in a mud puddle. Personally, I wade into mud puddles on purpose. You never know what you might discover in a mud puddle. You might find a lost sneaker, or a lost iguana, or a new insight about life. That's what I love about mud puddles. You can't see anything in there, so you don't know what you'll- Hey! Hey, don't talk about my sister that way. Passengers all over the sleep railroad opened their eyes and sat up in their seats. An iguana, an impassioned iguana, leapt up from his seat and stood on the very top of its back, jabbing a finger. Wait a second. Iguanas don't have fingers, do they? Jabbing a single claw in the air over and over at Filbert, who stood frozen at the microphone, taken aback by this bizarre interruption. My sister wasn't lost in that mud puddle, okay? She went in there on purpose. What is happening? Why'd you disrespect his sister? You shouldn't have done that. I, I didn't. 
I mean, I was talking about a generic lost iguana. I had no idea about... Filbert sputtered. Animals all over the place were sitting up, pushing up their sleep masks to reveal their actual, non-heart-shaped eyes and feeling second-hand indignation at the disrespect apparently shown to the impassioned iguana's beloved sister. I am mildly outraged by this. How dare that pig cast moderate aspersions upon that iguana's sister? It was a catastrophe. How would anyone get to sleep? Beside Lambden, the bobcat was unacceptably awake. Lambden wondered if he might also be hungry. On his other side, the bearded dragon went back to working on his crossword puzzle. Lambden watched as the moose rose from her seat, reached out a hoof, and pulled a lever on the wall. Two sleep group employees appeared, a tough-looking chimp and a wild-eyed llama. They immediately grabbed both Filbert the pig and the impassioned iguana and dragged, <clears throat> escorted them down the aisle, through a sliding door, into another train car. The moose smiled placidly, as if nothing was amiss. It's time for our final speaker of the evening. Once more, Cupid appeared, this time emerging from a baggage compartment above the seats. Lambden saw the fox moving his arrow's aim around the train's cabin, and he mentally reviewed what he might talk about in a speech if he were to be selected. I could talk about knots. That would be sure to put everyone to sleep. But it was not to be. Lambden watched as the suction-cupped arrow sailed over his head and landed somewhere in the very last row of the sleep railroad. Paddleton Poodle, please make your way to the lectern. Lambden watched as a teacup poodle emerged from the back row and trotted up to the microphone. The spindly creature had enormous eyes that seemed to sweep over the entire railroad with a single glance. Tonight I will share the art of leaf raking. Rakes relax me. Leaves comfort me. It seemed impossible that the voice everyone had just heard had come from that diminutive creature shivering behind the microphone, but it had. In the northern hemisphere, leaves are known for falling from deciduous trees to the ground during the months of October. <gasps> November, and also December. By January, 99.73% of the leaves have fallen. Lambden's eyelids drifted towards one another as he listened to the deep-voiced poodle continue his speech. In her seat at the head of the train car, the moose listed to one side. A hush fell over the entire sleep railroad. My favorite time to rake leaves is in mid-November, when there is a healthy blanket of them covering the forest floor. If you go out to rake too early, such as the first week in October, you might be disappointed. Lambden's eyes were shut tight as he tried and failed to focus on the particulars of the speaker's leaf-raking advice. He felt his mind swim with images of autumn. Memories came to him then of hours spent leaping into leaf piles with his cousins, of plucking leaves out of his wool for days on end. Lambden felt warm and cozy in his seat, even without a blanket. His thoughts went fuzzy, his mind 
quieted. The estimated wait time is three seconds. There are zero callers ahead of you. Lambden's eyes fluttered open. Yellow, Ronnie from the sleep crew here. How may I help you? Huh? Lambden sat up in bed and peeled back his pillow. Is there, uh, is there anyone there? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. I, uh, my, my sleep train button. It's, it's not working. Lambden glanced around. His bedroom was awash in morning light. The previous night rushed back. The sleep railroad, Valentine's Day, Cupid and his arrows. Sir, we are so sorry about this. I'm going to send out one of our best iguanas to take a look at it for you. Oh, okay. Uh, When should I expect? It'll be done within the hour. Just leave your window open a crack. We'll fix it up in a jiffy. Oh, uh, thanks. No problem. Lambden did not know how to hang up his button, so he got up and headed down for breakfast. Now, if you'll stay on the line for a minute, we have a quick survey for you. I hope you have a very sweet Valentine's Day. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are making it possible for me to keep doing this. You can get more of the stories you love, ad-free listening, and access to Little Stories for Sleep, an exclusive bedtime podcast with brand new sleep stories, by visiting littlestoriespremium.com. Thank you to Oliver and Sylvia for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to the many premium subscribers who supplied sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Olali, Felix, Rodeo, Kylie, Isla, Jude, Tiana, Coulter, Cora, Wyatt, Fletcher, Haley, Ella, Mia, Alma, Sky, Connor, Jack, Aston, Harper, Carter, Lila, River, Annika, Kels, Sylvia, Simone, and Dean. And thank you, as always, for listening in.